Hello guys, I was watching a video about a guy who was characterising how a product he had designed reacted at different voltages so that he knew what voltage say the, the product would stop working at as the batteries lost their charge. So I thought today we'd have a look at the Massey and see if we can do something similar. So I'm using my homemade power supply here so this might not be the best power supply to do this with it might not work perfectly but we'll give it a go so you can see the voltage here and we have the current here and this is set for the milliamp range at the minute <coughs> now this says 5.3 volts but that's because it's not loaded down so when I add the load the voltage should drop to just down to 4 volts which is around about what you might expect from um, a fully charged lipo battery I'd say. Now you can hear the rattling and we've quite a high current that's because the servo is slightly pushing on the wheels but if we relieve that see our current comes down. So that little rattling is one of the problems of using a servo to do your steering. It's easier to use the control board from the servo and requires a lot less wiring but if we were doing it properly what we do is get rid of the um, the control board from the servo because it's no good it's just a cheap control board and connect it control it directly from our Arduino so you'd hook up the potentiometer in the servo to an analog pin read the voltage and you'd hook the motor up to a motor driver then you wouldn't have all this rattling because this is only rattling because that signal it, that the servo is getting it's always trying to adjust that but you could put it into your code to get rid of that that would reduce your current because you wouldn't be wasting power on that servo control board but anyway that's what that is so um, let's take a look at the LEDs so we're kind of dipping around here this variation I'm pretty sure that's going to be due to the servo kind of adjusting themselves slightly but let's take a look if I put the indicator on so kind of hard to tell because the indicator is blinking on and off and uh, this is a cheap multimeter so it might be a bit slower but it's probably around about 10 milliamps or something but at the minute we're only even with the servo, the serum servo jumping around we're only going up to 130 so so there's both indicators on looks like getting about looks like about 10 or 20 uh, milliamp variation there again it's kind of hard to tell turn that off let's uh, try some of our lights so there's our headlights and brake lights, looks like that added about 20 milliamps. So we went from 80 something to 100. Turn on our spotlights, that's probably added another 20 there. So that's probably around about another 20. And you can see our voltage has come down a little bit, that would be expected. The servo is making this a little difficult, but let's say uh, test out the, the drive anyway. So we're at about 122 there. So freewheeling our motors added about 40 milliamps, but you can see our voltage has dropped. Now if I start to load them down a bit, you can see our voltage has gone down and we've overloaded this. So I've switched to the 10, 10 amp mode on this. So I'll load the motor down now. You can see our voltage dropping. We've gone up to 360 milliamps there. and the Arduino reset there because the voltage went too low so you've seen it blink off and reset like I said at the start there my power supply is not the best so it dropped out probably a bit quicker than a fully charged battery would um, the problem is that the battery can deliver the power really quickly whereas this coming through the transformer and all the circuitry that I have in here slows it all up so there's kind of a bottleneck to how much current can be delivered instantly what I really should have in here is maybe a super capacitor bank so that we'd immediately have the power when we wanted it. So you can see our drive motors brought the model up to about 360 there with all the lights on. So let's turn the, the lights off. We we'll give the steering a go here but like I said we're using the cheap servo here so I'm expecting this to waste huge amounts of power and as a result this might drop out so let's give it a go anyway. So 
So you've seen the lights flashing, that was the Arduino switching off because the voltage had dropped so low. So what I'm going to do is switch to the 3.3 volt line because these, the 3.3 volt line in this power supply can provide much higher current than my adjustable system. So what we'll do now, so now on the 3.3 volt line this voltage doesn't apply anymore this is fixed 3.3 volt that we're using now so ignore this voltage up here, there's nothing to do with it our current is still connected now so if we hit our current now see that there, we're at 3.3 volts but we're drawing 450 milliamps from just the steering servo, that's a huge amount of current so let's compare that to the uh, drive So you could see there when we loaded the motor down to an almost stall condition we were getting about 450 milliamps as well. So under normal drive conditions when we're not pulling a huge load you can see that our current draw is not massive from our drive. But when we load it down it gets pretty pretty high, it gets up to about 450 milliamps. The steering on the other hand, even on low, I'll have to switch back to the 3.3 volts. But you can see our steering is drawing much more current when it turns. So that's because um, the servo is under much more load when it's trying to fix the steering at an angle. That might mean that I'm forcing the servo over too much when I'm trying to take the corners with this model. I could probably reduce that angle a little bit and save on the power. The steering isn't great on this model so maybe it needs that much power just to pull the wheels over that way. So what we've really learned here is that when we're pulling a big load with this uh, tractor we're drawing about 400 to 450 milliamps when we're steering hard over we're drawing 400 to 450 milliamps as well so really we're drawing between 900 milliamps and an amp when we're trying to take a sharp corner and pull a heavy load at the one time so that's why you need the big batteries particularly when you're talking about something like a low loader that has say the three axles, they're hard to pull around a corner. If you have that loaded down, the tires are going to have a huge amount of grip. It's going to be hard to drag that around the corner. So this tractor will be working hard to pull something like that. And that's why you need the bigger batteries in those big trailers like that. If you have the room for them, uh, install them. Because you'll need that. Maybe 1000 milliamp hour battery would last maybe an hour. So that's why I put the high milliamp hour batteries into the low loaders and uh, the other trailers that are going to be carrying a heavy load. The 250 milliamp hour battery that's in this tractor wouldn't last too long if we were drawn uh, nearly an amp of power. It'd only last maybe 10, 15 minutes, something like that. So, but even at that, um, as it went lower, the Arduino would start to reset, so it wouldn't probably wouldn't even last that long. So that's all I wanted to talk about in this video. If uh, you found that interesting, make sure and hit the like button or share the video. And if you have any comments, you can head over to the forum. And that's pretty much everything, so thanks very much for watching.